Thank you, C man. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know um, him personally, but I've I heard about him years ago, and it sounds like he's doing really good stuff, especially for musical artists. Musical artists need to learn financial stuff because that industry just kicks their butt. Because the music industry has a very high level of financial awareness. <laughs> you know, those guys. You know, when NWA started and Jerry Heller brought that group together. His financial awareness was here. Their financial awareness was, you know, not quite there. Ice Cube had high financial awareness, but everyone else didn't. And that's why they signed those crazy deals. And then also, if you know that story about New Edition and how they went on that world tour and has sold out stadiums all around the globe and got a check for $1.87 after the tour was over, uh, that was um, that was where uh, financial awareness disadvantages came into play. They were 12-year-old kids from the projects, and they didn't have good mentors around them or anybody around them who knew how these things worked. So they end up getting exploited in a major way. So when you're not aware, when you, have, when you don't have consciousness about something, that opens you up to being exploited by people that are watching you. And one of the things that ha has to occur, the reason black economic consciousness must rise is because people extract wealth from the black community by by studying you like you're like you're rats in a the lab. They, they, they look at you and they're watching your every move and you're not watching anybody's moves. You're not even watching your own moves or you're at least that's the way we're trained anyway. We're just moving. We're just living. You know, so if you imagine a man who's conscious of watching a group of sheep or something. Uh, the sheep are not watching anything. The sheep are just being sheep. And he, but his consciousness, he he can see himself, but he can also see the, the sheep as a collective. So he has a perspective that allows him to understand, okay, all the sheep, you know, when the wind is blowing this way, they go that way. If I put the food over here, they'll all go that way. If the sheep dog, you know, moves them in this direction, they'll all go south or north or whatever. So what I want you to do is I want you to elevate the consciousness so that you don't end up sort of being exploited that way. You should at least be conscious of other people's consciousness, right? Like, like they know things, but you should know what they know. And then, and then maybe they know that, you know, what they know. And then when they know that, you know, what they know, then they don't want to talk to you no more. Right. So, so that's where, that's where my consciousness is when it comes to those who seek to extract wealth from the black community is, 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 is I know what I know. I know what they know. And, and a lot of times they know that I know what they know. So that's why when uh, a, a presidential candidate wants to sit down and talk to someone about black economics, he doesn't want to talk to Dr. Boyce. He doesn't want to talk to Dr. Claude Anderson. He wants to talk to Cardi B or whatever. He wants to talk to a rapper because he knows that rappers don't have a very high level of economic consciousness. And, uh, and I think I told you about that. I kind of, I, I, it sounds like I'm bragging a little bit. Maybe I am, but, uh, but, but you remember when Charlemagne, the God interviewed Joe Biden and asked him those really poignant questions about economics and asked him, you know, or, or just black people in general and what black people should expect and all sorts of, and Biden got really upset and he said, well, if you don't vote for me, then you ain't black. And, uh, and, and I, I think cause it was a year later, I could, or a couple of years later, I could tell people this, but right before that interview, <clears throat> I had text Charlemagne and told him what questions to ask. And so some of those questions he asked were questions where I specifically said, okay, ask him about this, ask him about this, ask him about that. And when he asked him those questions, he blew a gasket because he wasn't used to black men in entertainment collaborating with black scholars and black thinkers. And uh, and but this is nothing new. Farrakhan has been doing this uh, with entertainers for a long time where they strategize behind closed doors. The revolution doesn't always need to be televised. Uh, in fact, I think about the Celtics player, Jalen Brown. I love Jalen Brown a lot. He's my favorite at one of my favorite athletes of all time. Uh, not be just because he was the finals MVP, which is amazing for him. I'm really happy that he won the championship, but he's uh, super, 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 super smart. He's also super, 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 super black. So if you ever want, if I was ever to construct just the the uh, the perfect black man in terms of what I what I dreamed about, what my dream is, is that we have a community with like 10 million Jalen Browns. You know, like like if we had 10 million Jalen Browns, we couldn't be stopped because sure, he's a great athlete, he plays sports and he's competitive, which is great, but he also is super strategic and intelligent and he cares about his community. So all of his wealth his power his 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 capability is going to be targeted in the right direction he's not distracted because remember you had other great black athletes you had oj simpson and but oj was taking all of his he was giving his best to somebody else he was taking all the things that could have made him special and applying it in a different direction jalen brown uh, of the celtics 
is to me, he's in that tradition of the Muhammad Ali, where you have the greatest athlete on earth, one of the greatest athletes on earth. Ali was the greatest. Brown is one of the greatest. I mean, he's the finals MVP, which makes him the best player in the NBA finals. And he also just really is focused and targeting his energy in a good way. So I'm excited to see what he does, you know, and I think that he should have people, smart people, in his corner, smart people that are not trying to get things out of him that are in his corner that give him advice on how to use that enormous wealth and power that he's accumulating. But he also has to, in my view, remember that the revolution shouldn't be televised. So I don't think he has to let everyone know all those, you know, all those racist Celtics fans know exactly who he's consulting with, because at some point they're going to use that against him. Right. So I don't, I don't want them to do to him what they did to Jim Brown and stuff like that. Well, I was on the faculty of Syracuse and it's a shame how, how Jim Brown was the greatest athlete in the history of Syracuse. And uh, I watched a movie about Ernie Davis who won the Heisman after he, he played after Jim Brown, Jim Brown recruited him to Syracuse. And in the Ernie Davis movie, they painted Jim Brown in a really negative way, but yet they painted Ernie as, as the good Negro. And then Jim Brown was just this crappy, terrible guy. And Brown was just such an athlete. He was he was kind of like the Wilt Chamberlain. Uh, he did he did in football and track and everything what Wilt Chamberlain did in basketball and track. I mean, these guys are just superhumanly talented. And so anyway, let me keep going here. All right. So um, Lydia Crowder says purchase 100 shares to actively learn how to sell options more efficiently or reinvest dividends in dividend paying companies. It depends on what you want to do, Lydia. Uh, if you sell options, I think you just want to make sure you know how to do it in a way that's going to work for you. Um, if you log in at drboyceprime.com, um, there's a list of what I call Dr. 